Hello viewers, in this video we will be looking at the meshing of involute gear. So uh, uh, this uh, whole thing has been done using an excel spreadsheet as you can see before you. So we have a gear uh, shown in blue color on the left and a pinion shown in red on the right and uh, at the extreme right you have uh, a close up view of the pitch point. The common tangent to the base circle is shown in green here this uh, oblique line uh, around here this you can see the same thing is shown here along with the uh, from the points of tangency we have also drawn the radial lines uh, to the centers of the respective circles so this entire thing is controlled with the help of a small dashboard here on the left where we can enter various parameters but before we manipulate the parameters let's simulate the rotation of these gears uh, you will be able to see how the point of contact progresses along the common tangent to the base circles i would recommend that you look at the close-up view uh, towards the extreme right so this is the specialty of involute gears in this simulation i have kept the backlash zero while in practice we do have some backlash to account for the manufacturing inaccuracies. Another thing that you can observe is uh, that for the pinion, the base circle is lying outside the dedendum circle, while in case of gear, the situation is quite comfortable. The base circle is slightly inside the dedendum circle. Now we'll see how we can uh, uh, take care of these issues by manipulating various parameters. Now to begin with, uh, let's change the radius and uh, see how the common tangent uh, remains unchanged and the pitch point remains unchanged. The slope of the common tangent will not change when we change the radius of the pinion. Now the pinion and gear they are the same size now. Uh, now we'll increase the diameter of the gear on the right further by a factor of 5. Now you can see the shape of the, uh, the, the slope of the common tangent to the base circle remains unchanged. The base circle goes inward of the pitch circle by the same proportion so as to maintain the same slope for the common tangent to the base circle so we come back and uh, next what we do is we see the effect of changing the pressure angle so instead of having a pressure angle of 20 let's reduce it to 14 the situation becomes quite difficult for both the gear and the pinion the base circle comes very close to the pitch circle here is appreciably outside the redundant circle so we go back to pressure angle of 20 we increase it to 22 the base circle goes inwards you can see in the detailed view on the right i make it we make it 25 next and see the effect now the base circle goes appreciably inside we make it 30 yes now the situation is even better but the other problem that we're likely to face is the occurrence of peaking in the gear teeth which is especially undesirable in case of carburized gears so if we make it say 35 the gears become the gear teeth become pointed if the gears are case carburized they'll become very brittle because the through hardening will occur okay we come back to the standard value of 20 degrees for the pressure angle next we see the effect of module so instead of module of 2 we make it uh, uh, let's say we make it 3 you know 3 won't be acceptable because the pitch circle diameter is 80 and 60 so we make it 4 both are divisible by 4 now you can see the effect of module the dedendum and addendum circles have gone further apart from the pitch circle and once again we have the problem of interference because the dedendum is now lying inside the base circle so anyhow this is the effect of uh, changing the module of the gears so we make it two again so that we have smaller teeth and uh, next we look at the profile correction factor okay uh, let's increase the module first let's change 
the tire of this other gear also so i make it 40 no 40 is not something that i need i make it 25 and now we can have a module of 2.5 so in the detailed view on the right now you'll be able to see that in case of gear the base circle is fairly outside the redundant circle here while in case of pinion the base circle is uh, sorry, in case of gear, the base circle is pretty close to the redundum, but in case of pinion, it is uncomfortably outside the redundum circle. So we can try to balance this problem out by carrying out a negative profile correction on the gear. So just to help you understand and see how uh, the effect of this profile correction on the profile of the gears, I'll be doing a small simulation. So I provide a circular reference is equal to b5 minus 0.1 so it will carry out a negative profile correction on the gear and a corresponding positive profile correction on the pinion just see the effect the adenda and dedenda on the gear side they shift inwards and on the pinion side they shift outwards Peaking occurs on pinion while undercutting occurs on the gear if we are going in for a generative machining process which is use, which is usually the case. So just see, you can't go any further. Now the redundum on the pinion is now coming close to the pitch circle and the peaking has already occurred. So we go back. So this is the effect of the profile correction factor. So I guess this video has been useful for you for understanding and developing an insight into the way the involute gears are designed. Thanks for watching.